Hello everyone, this is the uh, class for the material kite directions. Uh, in this class, I'm going to talk about the different kinds of material kite directions techniques that is mainly used for the material science program. So first, first let's talk about what is the material kite directions. So material kite directions is the process of the measuring, determining, physical, chemical, and mechanical, and microstructure property of material. So we have the different material kite directions techniques. That the aim is to get the knowledge about the what is the elements and also what are the molecules or in the material and the state of these element molecule in the material and how the element molecules are arranged in this material. This is about the structure. And the last one is about the property. So the to put it simply is about the understanding about the material characterization is that to know about the composition, the elements or molecule inside the material and the structure and the property of the material. So this is how we are going to use different kind of techniques to understand the composition, the structure, and property of the material. So therefore, so many uh, characterization process. But uh, to put in simply, so, so we have a two main types. So we have a microscopy technique, and then we have a spectroscopy technique. So what is the microscopy technique? So microscopy is the the proving and the mapping of the material surface and the subsurface structure and to see the surface of the, the simple and the object that cannot be seen by the naked eye. So, by, but in this case that we are using uh, so many different lights so like uh, protons, electrons, uh, ions, or physical can deliver probes. That is how uh, in the microscopic technique, that's mainly we are using the, the surface of the, uh, the object or maybe the surface of the material. So, and then spectroscopy techniques. The spectroscopy techniques are uh, we using the, the absorption and emission uh, phenomena of light or maybe other radiation by matter uh, to understand about what the chemical composition inside and also the composition variation, the crystal structure, and also the electric property of the material. So, we have a two main different uh, type of the uh, chi directions so for material science microscopy and spectroscopy. So, let's start with the microscopy. So the first one, so we have the so many different microscopy that here I give you a few uh, microscopy techniques that uh, yeah, for give you the example. So the first one is optical microscope. So optical microscope is simply that we're using the light and then we see the image from the reflection of the, the surface or the simple. So this is the uh, copper surface that's uh, what I want doing for the master degree that I use the copper substrate for growing the graphene, but here this is just only the copper substrate. The, uh, uh, the, that's the, giving a heat treatment at the 1000 degrees Celsius for recrystallization process. So this is the, the image of the copper substrate using the optical microscope. So this, uh, the second one is the scanning electron microscope. So the scanning electron microscope is uh, mostly we use uh, this kind of microscope for the, uh, to characterize the nanoparticle. Uh, mostly, but uh, we also use for the other purpose too. So, for example, this uh, is the silver nanoparticle that I use in my uh, research uh, before. So, uh, in this case, uh, we have we we can see that the uh, nanoparticle that is dispersed uh, um, on the sub on the substrates of the uh, simple by using scan electron microscope. Here in this scan electron microscope, we use the electrons. So the, the electron is a scanning on the surface of the nanoparticle. So this, the next one is the transmission electron microscope. So this is the image of the gold nanoparticle rod that I uh, synthesized uh, in, my, in my research before. So the difference between the scanning electron microscope and transmission electron microscope, they use the same electrons uh, to uh, reach the surface of the uh, uh, surface that to characterize. But the thing is, the, the electrons in the transmission of the microscope is that they transmit into the material and I can see it into the 3D formations. So this is a difference between a CN and TM. So the last one is the atomic four microscopes. So the atomic four microscope is that uh, here we can see from the atomic four microscope that they use the, some kind of the tip that's um, tipping the, the whole surface and reading for take a long time. So this is the image of the um, image of the vertical graphene oxide, uh, the first, uh, the top image. And then the uh, second image at uh, the below is the uh, bind chitorexin by the AF and atomic four microscope. So by the atomic four microscope, we can see the thickness of these um, 
the uh, reducer phenol of snake flame. And also we can see that the sulfate roughness, how is the sulfate is a winkle, something like that. So this kind of information could be able to provide by the microscopy techniques. So the next one is spectroscopy techniques. So they have a variety of spectroscopy techniques, but here I give you some a few spectroscopy techniques. The first one is the uh, UV uh, ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. So UV is a UV spectroscopy. So UV spectroscopy is giving the um, absorption or emission piece of these, um, the, the particle in the solution for mostly for in the nanoparticle, for example. So the, the P is giving you the, the shape and the size of the nanoparticle and also how is the uniformity of the size of the nanoparticle in the solution. So that is a given by the UV visible spectroscopy. The next one is the X-ray diffusion. So X-ray diffusion is a giving uh, uh, the uh, giving the uh, bind kite the crystal structure of the material. Uh, for example, they um uh they got the diffusion piece uh in this uh, in the grid and the binding diffusion piece is giving the planes of the crystal structure and the bind the planes so we can see where the crystal structure inside them in the in this um in the material. So the next one is the X-ray proton electron spectroscopy. So the X-ray proton spectroscopy mostly used for the surface uh, characterization process. So what is the the elements and molecule in the surface and material? What is the state of these elements, the surface? Uh, this one is giving the different type of the uh, material, uh, depend on the the function group in the surface. So depend on the function group in the surface, the P it vary is depend on the function group in the surface. So this is how uh, HPS. Uh, uh, analysis and giving this kind of data. So the next one is the Raman spectroscopy. The Raman spectroscopy is um is giving the uh, the things just like the HPS, but the things that what is different is that. So the this is giving just like the, the formation of the uh, bonding between the uh, elements and also uh, by means that we can see the the quality of this material how how the form is something like that. For example, this one is just like the the radioactive oxide, uh, Raman spectra. So in this case, by means of uh, binds uh, completely this two P. Okay, what is the state of this uh, radioactive oxide? What kind of state? What is the how much uh, uh, oxidation like oxy, ox, oxygen fraction that is occur on the uh, graphene oxide? Um, something like that. So we can see this uh, quality of these um, radioactive oxide by means of the Raman spectroscopy. So the next one is the portals correlation spectroscopy. So we know the dynamic light circuit scattering. So in this case, mostly um, my experience, uh, we use uh, these uh, dynamic light scattering for the characterizing the hydrodynamic uh, side of the nanoparticle and also the zeta size. So in this, uh, in my research, I use DNS to synthesize the uh, uh, aerosol nanoparticle and then I do the electros, uh, poly electro studies coating. So by means after that, I see what is the stability of these uh, nanoparticle. Uh, for the first day that I do the synthesize, the after one month, uh, how is how the stability is the stability is given by the how what is the 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 amount of the charge on the surface of the nanoparticle. Uh, that is how we is going to categorize uh, the stable nanoparticle by using the dynamic light scattering. So next one is the microscopic testing. So microscopic te testing uh, includes uh, tensile hardness, toughness, and also I'm going to uh, give you uh, other the uh, microscopic testing just like a TGA something like that. So this is all about what I'm going to give you in the next upcoming uh, uh, lessons for all the particular uh, techniques I'm going to give you. But here, what is the most uh, special about uh, my um, lessons, that my presentations, but because uh, over the YouTube that you will see so many people's givings uh, about, so many, about so many techniques for the material categorization. But here in my lesson, what I'm going to give you mostly is about the principle of the uh, the technique. That's how is the principle behind this kind of technique is that. For example, we know x will put on electron spectroscopy. So this is called HPS, the characterizing the alpha I told you before, the, the state of the surface of the prop, uh, of the material. So we uh, produce, so the mechanism is very simple. The mechanism is given about, okay, we produce the x will x will um, is will is way and then this is with keep up these uh, the electrons on the surface of the material and then we collect uh, these um upcoming electrons from the surface of the material and then we got the peak 
uh, from this uh, electron electrons collector collection lens, and then we can see what is the depend on the energy of the p that we can see. So this is the what is the state of this uh um on the surface of the material. That that is how the mechanism is uh, uh in the x ray photon electroscopy. This is very simple. But what is the principle behind is that it uh actually yeah, there are so many principles that we need to understand. For example, we need to understand the principle of the photoelectric effects, the principle of the ionization, principle of the bindings, uh, something like that. But here I want to put in simply um uh to make it short, okay, in this uh, briefly introduction, uh Lexi. So in this case, so they have a very simple equations. So we know about the uh, energy of the incident photon, which is the the that the photon that we produce. This is a swell photon. So we know the energy by means of the the voltage appliance, which we use at one point five kilovolts. So that by means that we know the energy of the the photons and the x mu. Then, so by means of these x wheel photons, so these photons will going to keep out the one electrons. Or maybe the other so many different electrons in the different uh, uh, orbital or suborbital of the surface uh, of the surface elements on this material, and then, and then the electrons are uh, kicked out by the H well the high energy photons will be collected by the lens. When they collected of these electron, they will understand the kinetic of this electron. So the first thing we know is that we know the energy of the incident photon, which is H wave. And then we also know the kinetic energy of the electron, which will be collected by this electron collection lamp. So as we know about the kinetic energies and the incident photon, then we will know the binding energy. The binding energy of these electrons can out bind this particular uh, uh optic optic gem. So by mean that so these we will know these electrons coming from which orbital or which sub orbital. And also by mean that we will know the energy of these electrons and also we can tell what is the state of the elements on the surface of the material. By mean that we can tell what is what kind of elements on the surface of the material, what is the kind of functional group in the surface of the material. That's we can understand in these ways with photon spectroscopy. This is just brief principle that I'm going to give you, but in this part of our upcoming particular um, techniques that, that I'm going to give in more detail about how we need to understand the principle behind that workings and uh, for these kind of so many different techniques. So I hope and think if you are going to understand more deeply about the characterization techniques into in the principle and not just in the working principle, but and also not just not just about the how to read, how to characterize, how to use this machine, but more into about the principle of these techniques. Um, so I this is the right selection for you. And I hope that you guys enjoy for this lessons. And thank you very much. I hope uh, you guys are well waiting for the upcoming particular lexemes. See you.